Hey folks, we're here uh, today with our small boat restoration 1963 Alcourt Sunfish Chip. We've had her uh, since 2013. Got her all fixed up last year with the uh, fairing and primer paint, new bottom, sealed up seams, and she's been through her first season, her first uh, hurricane, so we wanted to come back and do an air leak test to see how everything held up, and after a about nine months of the paint being on if we've got in the sealant see if you have any uh, areas that need to be addressed so we did an air leak test put some low volume low pressure air into the uh, drain plugs and found a few small leaks along the along the seam under the rub strip probably from fastener holes that went in we could have probably prevented that uh, we're talking about It'd be five or six areas out of the whole uh, 30 feet of uh, deck seam. I could have prevented that, maybe put a little epoxy or varnish on the screw uh, into the pilot hole at, before we installed it. A few uh, leaks up at the bow. There's a lot of stuff happening up at the bow that we've got a plank coming in from either side, deck, hull, a uh, wooden stem underneath, and a launcher on on the deck another launcher on in the keel coming in so we're gonna clean that up a little bit apply some uh, thickened epoxy to seal up the little small bits we had now keep in mind we we're putting air in from inside pushing air out through any pass it might have had to escape and um, water's about six pounds per square inch I'm not sure I didn't measure the PSI of the air going in but my guess is it was probably more than six pounds so a couple things um, we've sailed the boat and had no leaks from water coming in from the outside so we're just gonna be extra careful get these things sealed up and um, some of the wood when it gets wet will also swell but with the plywood you don't really want that you want your plywood to be sealed up and stable I'm gonna talk real quick about uh, on the back here this these decks are made from uh, fur plywood. You might be able to see the seam. It's about a quarter inch thick. And uh, when you get to be almost 60 years old, you start to get some what's called checking in the top. These little bits you hear with the This veneer of wood is actually spread apart a bit. So there's probably three to five veneers of wood in here with glue in between. So when that spreads, that means uh, Moisture could get down in there, create more of the same type of thing. And or if there was any other checking below or grain-wise uh, fracture, so air at one point could work its way out. And we did see a few little spots like that, once again, forcing air from inside, probably at well more than six pounds per uh, square inch. So a uh, couple things we want to address is we want to fill in these little grooves and we've chosen to fill versus sand and get rid of completely because so once you sand this layer it's gone and unless you uh, fiberglass the deck or something and you're uh you're it's a uh it's a game you'll lose out eventually you won't you'll run out of plywood to sand through so we're going to get it scuffed up and we're going to fill these little voids with uh thickened epoxy we're just going to take a we're scuffing the uh, the deck and we're gonna take a spreader and put a thin layer of epoxy in there fill it so when it gets more primer paint it'll essentially be a smooth surface on the top so we've done one little area where we've scuffed it with 80 grit and you can see where some areas are smooth and some are not once again like you say you could keep sand until you got completely smooth but uh, we're not going to do that we just want to get uh, this area scuffed so it has some tooth to grip the next type of coating we put on it which is the uh, next thing is going to be a thin thin bits of uh, thickened epoxy and uh, it's the same type of sanding we would do between uh, coats of primer or uh, paint and we, we would not use 80 grit though we'd probably use 120 or maybe 220 so that uh, and that's a term Captain Jack taught, taught us. We give it some tooth for the next uh, coat. So that way across the whole surface, you've got 
something for the next uh, coating to apply to. So I'm gonna do this one little section over here because the other benefit you get from where you see it's kind of the dull finish that this sander has created versus the shiny finish is it lets you see when you put your next uh, coat of primer or paint on what's been primed and what's been painted gives you something to work with. So here comes the sander. So cover your ears a minute. Turn your volume down and mute for a second. <laughs> scuffed areas and once again we're going to address the little valleys that are left behind from uh, checking with some uh, thicket epoxy we're going to use thixo to uh, fill that and seal it and then uh, prime and get another coat of paint we like leaving these finishes if we can this is not even a year old because you know we'll just build and build and build uh, primer and paint to get a nice uh, Nice finish back on here, both protective and cosmetic. Hope y'all are doing great. Uh, Chip says hi, and we'll talk to you soon.